if you ask somebody that goes off-road and has a four-wheel drive, what is the difference between a four-wheel drive and an all-wheel drive? What is the single most important thing that will make that difference? And the typical answer will be a low gear transfer case. But does it really make that much of a difference? This trip was put together by Ian from Nolo Designs. Protect your ride. Save 5% with my code JONDZ5. And fall into savings with EcoFlow. Save up to 58% during the EcoFlow Fall Sales promo. Get exceptional Amazon Dill of the Day offers from October 10th to 11th. Use my code EFPFJDZA. This will give you an additional 5% off on something that is already on sale. Just to note, I get a small commission, you help out the channel, and you save money. It's a win-win. So on this trip, we had a lot of lessons, unexpected lessons. And I originally wanted to put together a one hour super episode where you could all share with your friends and family about the risks of getting out there and adventuring and things that could possibly go wrong. But after deeper contemplation, I just figured that I would have these separate videos that kind of focus on a certain issue. And so in this episode, I'm gonna talk about gearing. And do you really need to have four low? Every year for the past three years, I've been meeting up with Ian from Nolo Designs in Colorado. This year we met up in the town of Gunnison and we drove up into the mountains to secure base camp. What's happening back there? 10-4, Oh yeah, check that out. That is actually pretty steep. <laughs> Drive was I uh, break or not, but it really smashed the uh, this break really good. They just fill it up. Give me one sec, John. This is looser as I'm getting up here. You're good, it's all smooth. We are going to want to air down at some point anyways because this trail is going to dump us onto like a level 3 trail, so it might be worth doing. Yeah, let's go regroup and then uh, maybe we, Huey, could check out his brakes. anymore. Does it look like the grass has been run over, Ian? Yeah, it's, it's back up here. I think it's just because it's so green back there. Just wondering if someone has been through here lately. I mean, based on the fact there's this much of a road here, I'd say somebody's been through here somewhat recently. So when I think of Colorado, I think of the iconic trails like Imogene Pass for all the beauty, but we are coming across incredible terrain, beautiful vistas, and uh, as you see here, we're driving through a birch forest. An interesting fact, birch trees are typically connected at the roots, and they make some of the largest organisms on the planet. And so it's just uh, kind of an interesting fact to know when you come across these magnificent life forms. <laughs> no. 
So you can see here, this really unknown trail is absolutely beautiful, and we're really not coming across any difficult terrain just yet. One thing we expected was a lot of mud. There was recent storms, and we were prepared for this. Ian's running a prototype HRG lift kit for his 2023 Honda Pilot Trail Sport, but still it's not quite enough to clear that terrain. He's going to have to give it another try. Stay left. Stay. Driver. Here's Matt with his Toyota Tacoma four-wheel drive, has a factory rear locker. This is the TX edition or something like that. One thing that makes a four-wheel drive really special is they typically have a solid rear axle at least, uh, if not a front solid axle. And here's one of the stars of this episode. This is Javier RT Photos that has a modified Super Forester. Uh, I guess I'll just let you in on the secret. It has a dual range transmission. It's a manual transmission, but it has a low range. And of course, here is my 2019 Honda Passport. This trip was four months ago, and I just got the Bilstein 5100 rear shocks put in by K20 Nord Pro, owner of New Age Performance out of Ventura, California. The present day, my vehicle now has more of a subframe drop. It's taller, it has more ground clearance, but I am just kind of testing suspension parts. So if you're looking to lift your Honda, Trax is a good option, it is proven. And now here's Deck Like Adventure in his Lexus GX470, otherwise known as a Land Cruiser Prado. And so in my opinion, I think the biggest difference between a four-wheel drive and an all-wheel drive is just how much more flex a four-wheel drive will have. Here's Camping Randy in his second-gen Honda Ridgeline, and he's running a combination of an HRG lift kit and flat-out suspension coilovers. Here's a side-by-side -side of Ian's 2023 Honda Pilot Trail Sport next to my Honda Passport. And just know that my Passport is a lot more modified. The track width should be similar, but I'm running higher offset wheels. Here's Camping Randy's Honda Ridgeline next to a second generation Toyota Tacoma. Randy made sure that he had a light loadout for this trip. He knew that gearing could be an issue out here in Colorado. And now here is a massive difference in size. Subaru Force on the left and Lexus GX470 on the right. The massive difference in size and weight also correlates to a difference in MPGs. Now it's time for one of the deepest mud pits we came across this day. I was on this trail just five days before I got stuck in clay-like mud in Mammoth, California. So needless to say, I was very apprehensive about this mud pit that we came across, but I was glad that I wasn't gonna be the first one to try. So good luck, Ian. You want me to go? Oh, no. <laughs> it's necessary, right? You're, you're coming out of it now. You're popping out. Yeah. 
And you still have a lot of room on the right, too. Yeah, you have more room on the right, according to Javier. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I need to give it some beans here. Oh dang! Oh shoot! Yeah, Javier, it looks like you could probably go more yeah, to, the right. to the right. Because then, I'm going to point out that it takes a lot of skill to off-road and stick. And let's be honest, I think that's why a lot of us <laughs> drive automatics, right? So Javier is taking a safe approach. He didn't just yeet it through. You never know what's lurking below. I'm up next and I'm feeling very nervous. Remember, it was just five days ago when I was stuck. All right, so even though I got through that the first time, I hit my skid plate and bent it pretty good. I should have been more careful like Javier in his Subaru. Like I said, you never know what's lurking below and I probably hit some kind of boulder. Hey, Randy did really good. Good job. All right, let's go see the damage. <laughs> I hit the front of the bumper right there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? If I had your bumper plate, if I uh, would have, <laughs> it would have been. Sorry, man. I just didn't have the time to put it on. Thanks, Randy. Yeah, is there any spot you want me to hold off and let you get all the way up? To get up into this corner here, just so that maybe there's some weird, you know, drainage ditch or something funny. So let me get through this bend and then I'll, I'll haul around you. Got it. guys when you're going are you like when you're on the steepest part like three quarters of the way up are you flooring it because i'm floored all the way to the floor when i'm going up all right come on up matt you're good to answer your question randy no um we just light throttle yep yeah i'm full pedal three quarters of the way when it's just like crawling almost stopping yeah, and I, I also think it's different, like how Honda has their like, like the German automatic transmission and this and the Honda six-speed. It's just a different kind of transmission too. I think the uh, I think the Honda one um, has it like it'll stall. It might stall easier. That's what I end up having happen. So like right here, I'm really light throttle, like five percent or something. I'm gonna give. Um, and mine's still on a bit right now, so I need a little space just in case. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Let me go back it up a little bit, um, and I'm sure you'll be able to, to launch from there. 
This will be really good. I'm recording you. <laughs> You got it, you got it going. That's a mid climb. And then Randy also, uh, like mid climb, I'm able to like, continue on too. So I, I stopped for Javier. Uh, Javier stalled a couple times and I just was right behind him because I wanted to get footage of him. Yeah, my issue is just I need a little momentum to start that climb. Yeah, it's a decent climb and uh, it's kind of nice that you're able to kind of launch, get yourself going again. Uh, right here towards the end, I'm, I'm pressing on the S just a tad bit more. Like maybe, uh, I would say 30% now. Yeah, man. Fighting you did it. A bit. So I just want—I wanted to ride the clutch a little more. That's why yeah. I had to stop. I didn't. I actually—I don't think I actually stalled. Maybe one time. Oh, you didn't stall. I okay. Think I might have stalled once, but okay. it was just—I had to just ride that clutch, and I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't this is the money it. shot right here. Yeah. Let me cross over. Yeah. Yeah, Starbucks. Don't stop it. Yeah, you just got to go back down and then uh, it's over that way. Oh, I might yeah. have got lost. I'm looking for Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, it's over there. Yeah, you can't okay, miss it. All right. You can't That's miss easy. it. All it's right. green. The you know it's the built. The logo's green. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can't miss it. So I can just back up. Go yeah, yeah, back up. Right. Yeah, just just back up. All right, cool. <laughs> Already. Dude, that's where the flat out suspension comes in handy because it's yeah. a race suspension. There, you can see this roof. Come on, Baba. If he's in trouble, it's gonna be right here. If he gets over this, he's got it. I see it. Come on, Randy. Is it the weight? It's gear. Didn't make it. Yeah, doesn't look like he made it. Here he goes. Yep, just concentrate. Don't hit rev limiter. Don't don't just shift in a second. Him. Just keep talking to him. Keep That's going, good. man. Looks good. I see smoke. Oh. Uh, still going. All right. I have a two, and I have some a bunch of soft shackles. And, uh, and uh, what is it? Yeah, we'll just get them all in yeah. case. Like you might, who knows? He might be like 120 feet down. All right. Of course, nothing ever looks steep on camera, but I think you could, you know, seeing the trail down there uh, gives you an idea. Yeah, this is this is freaking steep. This is freaking steep. Here comes Dak. Nice. You know he he has a winch line. Huh? He has a winch. Yeah, but no, but let me just pull him all the way up. Okay. Uh, does he want to hey, use but who for your drivetrain though? You know that you know that's no, like. It's, it's I, I know. I oh, it. Okay. He's got the okay. Line All right. Just saying. Yeah. Uh, you know though. You know this. Yeah. You know this. So people, when you see Huey pulling this up, he is re-geared with uh, five twenty-nine gears, right? Four, five, six. Four, five, six gears. And, uh, stronger, uh, the gear and, everything else. and then this is an LX. I mean, sorry, this is a yeah. GX four seventy, but he has replaced his uh, differentials one. with beefier ones. Yeah. Yeah. So he hooked me. Yep. Yeah, that would be a better, that would be and better. And the moment Let's just there, soft shackle that yeah. to your, your back yeah. end. And then uh, when he's up, yeah. just go strap him and we pull him up. Okay. Yeah. We'll get him the you spike. probably turn around right here. Yeah. It looks like good flat. not too bad. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. All right. Got little shackles right there. Keep coming. I got nothing. Keep coming. There we go. All right. I got 10% battery life on my GoPro, so I'm going to just cut it off right here. Basically, we're hooking up that D ring to one of the shackles. He has two shackles on both sides. All right, we hooked up to the passenger side, better, uh, better center point. Randy called for that. All right, Randy, it's hooked up. Everyone, stay clear of the line.
All right, there you go. It's taut ready. Care uh, okay. Hey, just real careful with those pulls. He sits. I move. Jeremy, tell him to stay. He can hear you. Yeah, don't don't move. He says uh, he'll he'll he's gonna winch himself. Yeah. Yeah, this is gonna be really stressful on the transmission, but we'll see if his uh, cooler helps. Yeah. Right. Ooh. Whoa, what was that? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Oh man. It's like that transmission that just not it's uh Yeah. 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 Hey, hey, Randy, save your transmission, man. What, what's your temp stat, by the way? Yeah. Overheat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're overheating? Okay, uh, let Huey just pull you then, man. back up now. All right. <laughs> All right. Here we go. We're going to get turned around here. Drive forward, center, center yourself. All right, they're good. Jack, so what's up? You want to use a toe strap instead of a kinetic rope, right? Yeah, because for this one, we're going to pull the car behind on a steep hill. Um, and he's not stuck. He just, the engine doesn't have enough uh, the power to the, yeah. the transmission. Yeah. The other thing is that the toe strap have to be at the correct weight, yeah. at least three times the weight of the vehicle that you tow, not your vehicle. Yeah. So I got offered with a 7,500 pound earlier, for a soft shot. but it won't work. Right. Huh? Okay, stand clear of that, just in case. Nice. Nice recovery points, Randy, on that bumper. By the way, I love giving shout outs to my friends. And Randy has a store called CampingRandy.com. He sells that front bumper that he has. He sells all sorts of things. So make sure to check out his store, CampingRandy.com. So this part isn't as steep as down there. Thanks everybody we for your help. Yeah, man. Oh, we good work, good work guys. So here. just to let you know on that six speed when you were telling me to yeah. let do all the gears and all that, there's nothing. You got low and D and that's oh, it. And okay. I put it in low uh -huh. and I go and it shifts it, to second. There's Yeah, when it shifts to second, it's game over. There's nothing. It's tw no, it's even it's like 2500 RPMs. It's a, and that's oh, it. Okay. So when you were saying yeah. rev limit and all that, yeah. there's like, no rev limit. Uh, yeah, okay. I can't, I can't, even, even, I can't uh, even get up to the torque. Oh, uh, this thing's about to die by the way. Oh, okay. See you okay. later. <laughs> now this video is not over yet. We're going to get into the good stuff. So keep watching. Hopefully I reignited your attention span and we're going to talk about a few things. First of all, here is the topography of the United States of America. You'll see on the west coast, so California, Nevada, Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, these are states that have high elevation and rockier terrain. Randy comes from the east coast. He doesn't have this type of steep terrain, so back home 
the ridge line is well within its limits. So now we have to answer the question, do you need four low when you go on your adventures? And the answer is yes and no, right? Let's bring up the numbers again, and you'll see here that the Honda Ridgeline, geared at 14.3, wasn't able to make it up that steep hill. If you look at the Passport, the Dual Range Subaru Forester, and the Honda Pilot with the Honda 10-speed transmission, uh, we're kind of existing between the Ridgeline and the second generation Toyota Tacoma. And then there's the re-geared Lexus GX that has a bump in gearing. So since we've been driving through so much mud, we found this water crossing and took advantage of it. The reason you're going to see us driving forward and back is because we're trying to wash away all that mud on our undercarriage. So by the way, I'm not making this video to make people feel bad or make people that have four-wheel drives feel almighty. I am just trying to get the truth out there. We literally weren't expecting to have any trouble on this quote unquote fire road. It's just that this fire road is really steep. Now, does that mean that this 2023 Honda Pilot Trail Sport with the most aggressive gearing in any all wheel drive available today, does that mean that it could drive up any steep grade? And the answer is no, not something that's going to be difficult, not something that's going to be severe or extreme. If the trail is rated for moderate four wheel drive, you could expect this Honda Pilot, the dual range Subaru Forester, and my Honda Passport to drive up without pushing the limits. I'm not saying this to make myself feel better about my vehicle choice. I'm saying this because a lot of people out there clump all wheel drives in one category and that means that they need to have four low they lack four low and they get can't get to certain places that a four-wheel drive with four low could get to the good news is that all wheel drives are getting more aggressively geared we went from something like this to now something like this ford all wheel drives are at 17.9 and they're very competitive. Don't be surprised if they start bumping up that crawl ratio. Maybe they, maybe they'll see this video and like, hey, we got to bump it up to 23 to 1 or 25 to 1. And then even Subaru is bumping up their crawl ratios. So you have the Forza Wilderness. It is very similar now to the Nissan Rogue. And I am missing the RAV4, which is at 16.7 to 1. Sorry, Toyota. So this video is still not over, and I know it's getting longer, but there's one more point to hit. So please keep watching. So we're now driving up a mountain range. That's why this trail is getting so steep. Randy went ahead to get a bit of a head start. I'm not gonna bust Randy's balls. That's not the intent of this video. I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad if their vehicle doesn't have the gearing to drive up a really tall mountain like this. Again, I'm just getting the truth out there. I'm keeping this honest. This isn't even about making it up that hill or not. In my humble opinion, there should be a lot of cushion between making it and not making it. Now to help illustrate how much gearing makes, I drive up this hill at one mile an hour. 
this is going to show off a vehicle's gearing and also operation of the torque converter. Will it stall? Okay, go. All right, here we go. Slowest send ever. One mile an hour. Actually, it's it's 0. 0.5 to one mile an hour. Underway. working that nine speed because this 10 speed feels like it's it's doing it but it's like hey we can go touch quicker uh you got me stuck i'm staying in it all right we're free this is so so soft it's digging in uh-oh uh-oh i think i'm cross axled <laughs> either that or my my transmission's like f you john f you <laughs> all right let me just bump out of this You might want to back up because this thing won't roll back. Because I, I press my brake all the way down, that means that it disconnects the throttle. All right, let me get out of here. I'm skidding sideways, so just let me drift back. Oh, yeah, you're at like full droop, dude. Right there is good. You're on the knuckle, John. Stop. From here, it looks like passenger might work well. I don't know. So does your vehicle need four low? Well, first of all, I think it's going to depend on where you're driving or where you want to get to. And then it depends on how much you're willing to push your vehicle and take risk. And then last, crawl ratio and torque converter operation matters, as we see here. So anyways, I. There's a lot more to this trip. This is only half of it. And in the next episode, we're gonna talk about another very important thing, and that's um, vehicle maintenance and what could possibly happen if your brakes go out. I've never seen this before. I haven't seen this on YouTube. This is gonna be crazy. So you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned. So. Subscribe, hit that bell so you get the notification because this could happen to anybody. Brakes exploding where you lose all your brakes. That means your parking brake doesn't work. Nothing works at all. You have no choice but to run into a tree, right? So just imagine you're driving up this kind of terrain and you're going downhill and your brakes go out. What the heck do you do? And most importantly, how could you prevent this from ever happening? Because you do not want your brakes to go out. You don't want them to explode. It's, it's the craziest thing I've ever come across in my overlanding adventures. So anyways, I uh, hope you enjoy this one. Um, I made this video to kind of help answer that question. Do you need four low? With where I go, for the most part, I don't. But would I be better off with a four low in an off-road situation? Absolutely. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to dispute that. 
but I will tell you that a four-wheel drive might not be the best fit for you, especially if you're looking to drive long distances. A vehicle like Javier's Super Forester with a dual range transmission and a rear torque locker in front, Cusco LSD, that gets 30 mpg highway, might be a better fit.